So welcome to Leza, Leonardo, Art and Science, Evening's Rendezvous, Silent uh, and Leza Nomad. Today's discussion, Inception, Fermentation, Transformation in Sound Art. The Leonardo Lasers are programs of, inter of uh, international gathering of artists, scientists, humanities, technologists, which are getting together for informal presentations, performances, and conversation with the wider public. The mission of LASER is to encourage a contribution to the cultural environment of the region by fostering interdisciplinary dialogue. Today, we have a very special laser. It's a collaboration between two programs to explore potential of collective efforts. Today's laser also created in conjunction with SciFest 14, Festival Ferment, which examines and explores the theme of fermentation through the dual lenses of art and science, and also its broader metaphorical meaning and all the possibilities it offers. One of the main topics for today's discussion is how can we apply and examine the process of fermentation both as the medium and approach to sound art. Can fermentation be used as modification of matter? to create something new, new sounds, new readings, new meanings, or hybrid forms in visual, digital, and sound art. How transformation process evolve in listening acts and audience, audience perception of sonic art. Our first speaker is, a, is our tonight's co-host, and also host of Laser Nomad, Luca Forcucci. He is an artist, scholar, guest professor who observes and perceives properties of the first person experiences through a large scale installations, uh, videos, photography, and writing. The research investigates the mental imagery of sonic architecture. His works been showcases as part of Ars Electronica, Binali in Palermo in Palermo, also in Madrid, in Rio de Janeiro, in Lapin San Francisco, in Rockbound Shanghai, in Academia de Kunst in Berlin. His platform develops art and science encounters. He is author of many publications including the chapter which is shared right now with you on uh, in, 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 entitled Sonic Imagination Body, Visual Mental Imagery and Nomadism in the book, Sounds from Within. Luca, please tell us about yourself, your artistic search and research and your inter and your also the history behind Laser Nomad. Uh, Luca, please. So thank you very much for thank you very much for the invitation to share with uh, Laser Nomad. I will uh, directly jump into uh, a presentation. Um, let me share the screen. I think you see my screen. It's okay. Yeah. So yeah. So the platform um, Ubiquity Lab is responsible for the Laser Nomad. And uh, it's a mobile research laboratory for field work. Um, it's based in Berlin, and it promotes art and science research, produce talk, podcast, and collaborative concert in specific geographical sites. So the main idea of this uh, is the concept of undisciplinarity. In order to shift uh, a epistemology shift, create epistemology shift and also to envision non-canonical perspectives. The whole idea is serendipity, meaning that with an idea and through encounters, accident will uh, occur 
and then we will develop projects on that base. So that's the engine of Lazy Nomads. So it started in 2018, uh, the South African College of Music that's been presented in Brazil. Uh, and then in 2019, it went to Berlin, to Italy, to Portugal, and then 2020, uh, the dynamics was broken by the pandemic, but we managed still to make one in between the drops. And then in 2021, we went to the south of Switzerland, and then uh, south of Europe. And then uh, now we are in Yerevan, it's the first time we do it online. And then uh, the next one in November will be in uh, Osaka in Japan, if all goes well, of course, because it's still struggling with pandemic there. But for tonight, I uh, will talk about this uh, book um, for which I was invited to uh, write a chapter. It's a decade long uh, project on uh, body, uh, especially visual and mental imagery, nomadism, and uh, so a lot of uh, what I do is made through loudspeakers uh, as electroacoustic music. So uh, I was always interested to see what is the visual, visual mental image that is created uh, through the sonic experience as an uh, internal uh, experience. And if there would be a common patterns between people so I start here with uh, Wim Wenders and his movie Until the End of the World, where uh, he creates a device, a fiction, it's a fictional device, of course, it's a movie, uh, that translates brain activity and it records dreams. So the idea of having the subjective experience as the artwork is what interests me, because also music and sound is is mostly based on a subjective experience and what happened in uh, one's mind. I mean, I'm not interested to investigate what is in one's mind because there is ethical problems, but yeah, this is the device from Wim Wenders. But then we have also Federico Fellini who would paint the content of his movie and he will analyze them with a uh, Jungian psycho uh, psychoanalyst and so in his movie, there is this sonoric aesthetics. So he kind of building bridge between the worlds, between the real world and between the dreams. And so then he creates connections with the subconscious. So this is one of the paintings of Fellini, uh, which would inform then uh, his movies. So both work uh, with this utopian idea of uh, reaching to reach the subconscious. And for my project, uh, that uh, for this chapter, the idea was to explore if there was a pattern between the listeners of, of sonic artworks and their um, imagination. So. Uh, the seed of this project uh, started in, uh, in uh, Notting Hill, during the carnival, uh, where going through several sound systems, I would cross literally a wall of sounds. And so the materiality of the, of the sound was felt by my body and uh, an invisible material sonic architecture was created. So all this was creating uh, sonic uh, imagery at the same time and i was perceiving i was embodying this this uh, uh, experience so goodman proposed uh, that resonance surfaces uh, is potentially a host for contagious concept percept and affects and this drove me uh, crazy and also until now so I have to pay homage to Pauline Oliveros, who was one of my main mentors all over 
uh, these years. And also uh, the neoconcretists from Brazil, especially this work from Eliotisica, where the participant embodies the work in Parangole, and he became part of it, as he would become part of the Asonic experience. And yeah, so I will, I will share some works here. This was created in a, a, the lab gallery during the scientific delirium madness uh, residency in uh, San Francisco. And the idea was to take the, the body as the source for um, a composition. So we would take the, the sound and the electricity of the body to create this uh, composition. And then um, the dancer would dance with many device and go around the, the space. So this other project is based on uh, the author, uh, Blaise Sandra. Uh, we are from the same town, but with different epoch. And so there's a fermentation of ideas here during the time. Um, so basically I was uh, following him in Brazil because I noticed that he went to Brazil at the same age that I went. And I didn't know it was his Brazilian people that told me that. And uh, so the idea was to embody uh, the journey of someone through his writing. So I created a, a bunch of work based on, uh, on uh, this journey. And, uh, but then at that point in 2016, uh, there was a soft coup from uh, Dilma Rousseff who was dismissed from uh, a position of president of the, um, uh, Brazil. And so these words started to enter my, my, my work somehow, um, which is a poem that I, I put on, on the, um, in Sao Paulo where you can enter the poem uh, and then uh, the writings of the street entered my work. This is a homage to uh, Pauline Oliveros and Stanley Kubrick as well. Uh, and then another, pro uh, another thing that has preoccupied me uh, lately since 2015, 2017, is the idea of ancestral technology and in, in the electronic forms, meaning how to uh, work with uh, these old instruments that tend, the knowledge starts tend to be, to disappear because uh, the knowledge of the master of this instrument are into rural environment. And then the kids go to cities as, as we all do. And so there's a gap in the knowledge. So the idea was to, uh, re-enact uh, these instruments in electroacoustic forms. So I started to collaborate with several um, musicians there, and uh, we also improvised with between uh, the piano, I mean, uh, with uh, prepared piano, electroacoustic music, and with Paul Molinkeng that plays around 100 of those instruments. And we will try to create those forms, those new forms with, uh, for these uh, instruments. So we tried different setup. Also met Smile Makama that was working with bow instruments. And I asked him if he was hacking the bow. And he told me, no, no, I'm augmenting the bow. So, well, it's another form of fermentation here at another level. And those are the instruments we, we worked with. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Lizutu. Uh, it's a flute. It is my favorite sound. Could warn the ancestor of the SMS message. And so we, we, we uh, made several attempts with this um, instruments to create these, these, these forms. So at some point I encountered Phil and he lent me some movies from Izutu and South Africa. 
And it was another layer of fermentation in the sense that they were too epoch because those movies were shot in the 70s, according to what he told me. And uh, there was this music that I was uh, doing at the, at the same place. And so there was layers over layers of uh, experiences. And so at the moment, I'm conducting this uh, research in Ghana. I'm just back from Ghana. Uh, and I, I'm continuing uh, those ideas. So that's it for me. Thank you so much, Luca. And now our next uh, speaker is Sergei Kamarov. He's a sound artist and curator. In 2003 and 5, he curated Isolation Works label that published works by Russian experimental musicians. And since 2008, he has worked as computer programmer and engineer at Silent Media Art Lab. And since 2013, he has curated SciFest International Media Art Festival audio projects and Silent Audio Archive. Sergei Komarov is a participant of many exhibitions, including Arc Stayania Festival, exhibition, exhibition at Goldsmith, exhibition at Pratt Institute, National Arts Club, Kafoska University in Venice, Experimental Intermedia. Sergei is the author of upcoming article entitled, uh, in, entitled uh, for, uh, for the upcoming uh, 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 article the Venitas of uh, Sonic Art for the upcoming Leonardo journal called Ferment. Sergey, tell us about yourself, your research interest, as well as the project of Silent Media Art Lab, including your views on fermentation process through, through the lenses of uh, saturation. Uh, Sergey? Good evening, anyone. Thanks for joining jo join us. Thanks for the company, stories, and uh, conversation. Uh, I'm curating uh, the Silent Audio Archive. This is the picture of the web shop of the uh, releases of this uh, archive. It's a repository of the uh, sound art uh, pieces that in this uh, repository help us uh, to show sound art at, uh, at our uh, exhibitions and uh, not lose this bodiless uh, medium in the big exp expositions, in big spaces, uh, among uh, objects and uh, different installations. So uh, by these records we can present bodiless sound art or just in the same space at the other uh, objects on the exhibition. Uh, as Natalia said, not uh, too long ago, I wrote an uh, art uh, uh, essay. Uh, uh, this is a essay for a special is issue of Leonardo magazine uh, on fermentation. And in this uh, article, I talk, uh, talk it about a fermentation in relation to sound uh, artworks. Um, about uh, uh, how the artist uses the fermentation itself as a chemical process uh, as well as the uh, me me metaphor for the transformation of uh, matter and the senses, uh, sound and meanings. Actually, my exploration um, turned it uh, into uh, two such groups uh, and the idea uh, was uh, which works use the really chemical processes and some metaphors. So, and if the idea of uh, just bury magnetic tapes for a month seems uh, too obvious for you, then uh, proceed further for the, uh, yeah, here's the project where the people bury the tapes. Uh, so if this too obvious for you, uh, then proceed further uh, to the BPM artwork made by, uh, this is the installation by uh, Oleg Malinok, Vasily Bakanov, Alexey Grachov, Andrei Strokov and Alexander Bachkov. Uh, the title BPM refers to beats per minute, but it uh, means blobs per minute. And uh, here is the 
fermenting beer that uh, give us the triggers to the drum set uh, and by the way uh, after the festival this uh, beer finally was bottled and uh, turned it out very very good tasty uh, this is uh, uh, this was this uh, exhibition it was a project uh, SciFest Ferment Festival in uh, Dartington Hall, England, and uh, this was the first iteration of SciFest Ferment. Right, right now we are working uh, on just on montage in year one on the continuation of the SciFest uh, Ferment Festival, which will be open from October 10 to 25. So we are still this is still ongoing project and. Um, the project uh, involves uh, which involves the uh, fermentation in uh, like a real fermentation you know the, here is the uh, slow burning the installation by Vasily Bakanov it's a black box with a constant temperature and humidity uh, with uh, very slow fermentation during the whole exhibition uh which uh, just last the full time of, of the project uh, and the fruits inside is uh, changing the they they form and color and uh, it uh, changing the tone and timbre of the uh, of the chart here is the result what is happening inside these boxes and uh, these beautiful fruits still be eaten and very tasty too so working with uh, fermentation is a very good idea we have food and beer uh, and jump into the project the, that um, uses uh, fermentation more metaphorically I want to inter, uh, show you the first uh, what is coming to my mind when I'm thinking about the fermentation and the relation uh, to sound. I was always thinking about the magnetic tape and uh, saturation stuff. Uh, so this you, you see the degraded uh, tapes which we use it on the installation I want to introduce next uh, this is uh, how it works like the well-known uh, disintegrated loops by William Basinski but uh, on the same principle the installation quantum by me and Alexei Grachov uh, we use we use this tape not for for the music but for the uh, playing back the recording of 10 minutes uh, hourglass, hourglass uh, which is uh, taken about uh, 230 meters on the tape and the whole time of the exhibition it's uh, playing in the loop uh, which is of course degrading and the sound of the hourglasses which is uh, also very close to the white noise uh, is mixed with the noises uh, added by this degradation of the tape. So, installation is equipped with a uh, counter for the grains, and, and uh, this is very interesting phenomena that we have the same 10 minutes hourglasses, the same 230 meters of the tape, but the counter on each repetition counting more and more particles of the of the sand so this is kind of a time machine uh, which is using this interesting phenomena and uh, of course uh, magnetic tape is yeah here is the the whole piece magnetic tape is a uh, very interesting medium not only because of the uh, it, it may be disintegrated or uh, ruined 
it's also very interesting to to use it in in the meaning of the circumstances uh, during the life of this tape uh, for example interesting found out for uh, uh, that was just find find on the flea market uh, I, I want to show you just a small example of it El contraste de arquitectura, esculpido, perspectiva, piedra y cielo, se beben por el Something interesting in a very usual, just uh, common tape, which is also very interesting in the in the transformation of the uh, meanings and se and sense, which was used by uh, very different persons uh, for the very different purposes. And uh, yeah. Of course, and when uh, we are talking about the fer fermentation, about saturation of sound, I'm always uh, reminding the Alvin Lucier sitting in a room because uh, here is uh, also transformation of sound uh, during the repetitions was made. Uh, so the idea after after I finished this essay, uh, I'm completely turn it uh, onto very interesting for my opinion on thing that the uh, fermentation for the uh, uh, media artists is the same medium like uh, Venitas was back in the uh, for the artist they used the the schools the dead animals uh, about uh, our life metaphors and the uh, if uh, modern contemporary artists want to add some some same uh, de 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 say uh, things to their artwork they uh, can try to use the fermentation as the medium for this thank you very much thank you sergey thank you sergey our next uh, speaker is Catherine Liberovska. She is a Canadian-born intermedia artist who is based in New York City. She involved in experimental video since 1980s. She has been produced numerous single-channel video art pieces, video installations, video performances, as well as works as other media. Her works have been shown around the world. Since 2001, her work predominantly focuses on intersection of moving image with sound, music in various both ephemeral and fixed forms. For example, projections, installations, performances. Notably, she collaborated with many composers and sound artists within her works. In addition, her artworks in addition to her artwork, she also curates event in experimental video film and sound music and uh, video performances, including screen compositions and uh, opti optosonic uh, tea. In 2014, she completed her PhD at the University of Quebec in Montreal. Uh, Catherine, can you please tell us about yourself, your artistic search 
and research interest and uh, the relationship you see between the film and the fermentation process. Uh, Catherine, please. Um, well, actually, yeah, I was uh, going to talk. I, 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 my work spans a lot of uh, different things. Um, uh, I come from visual arts, and in the late 1980s, I began to work uh, with video, and um, video took me to sound and uh, took me to video performance. An installation was uh, at the very beginning. Um, and um, mostly I, I, what I prepared to talk about was, was um, well, what, what I understood I was asked was to talk about how, how my work relates uh, or if my work relates to fermentation in any way. And um, I wanted to talk about uh, a, a particular body of my work that I call strange loops. And um, this is works where uh, I set up a system or an apparatus that uh, after that um, takes on a life of itself. Um, so um, I think that the very first piece, and, and I'll show an excerpt of it uh, shortly, um, was done uh, during a residency in Milano. And, and so it was an apparatus that included, um, or e e even a, a setup that, that included a lot of physical objects, um, but also video cameras uh, that uh, reshot the objects uh, and 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 themselves, so that created feedback. So th that's a certain kind of strange loop. But also, the fact that um, here I, sh I should show an ex excerpt quickly, and, um, and then continue talking about it. So we have this one. Yeah, so that's a piece that's called Shines. So yeah, yeah, during this residency uh, in Milano at a um, uh, place called O, uh, I uh, spent a month there uh, going to hardware uh, shops and collecting um, different hardware objects uh, according to the sounds they made. And, and so um, with this, I, I set up uh, a, a wall of, of these objects that would strike each other and they were attached to piezo microphones and uh, there was fans blowing on them. And so, um, so then the music made itself and, and then there was cameras reshooting, uh, shooting them and projecting, and there was a projector projecting that image back onto itself. So there's this effect that there's a uh, hundred times more objects than there was in the first place. And um, the um, and and so it, to me that's really uh, a form of fermentation because I set up a system and 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 the system takes on its own life. And um, the it, an, an interesting very. Um, down to earth um, inspiration for that is is that uh, coming from 
the visual arts and kind of ever since I was a child, I was always a visual art artist, but I've always worked with sound, but I never feel sure of myself in sound. So a, a lot of the works where I do the sound myself, I like to set up such a system where the sound creates itself because I don't have to make the decisions or otherwise I work with composers because I feel that they know more about sound than I do. Whereas with the visuals, I always feel sure of myself. I can decide, this is how I do the composition. This is, uh, I always felt very sure of my decisions. So then, uh, and I have a whole body of, of these works called Strange Loops. So for example, uh, another piece um, I could show you an, an, an excerpt of is, is a piece I showed at one of the, early sci-fests in, in, in uh, St. Petersburg, and it was a collaboration with sound artist Keiko Winishi, who also goes by the name of Oblat. And um, at the time uh, I had received a grant and uh, I uh, invited her to uh, do a collaboration with me. And when we started discussing what we could do at the time, she was uh, doing projects with uh, feedback. And so she was, um, actually she still works with this a lot. Uh, so her home sound and music is based on uh, picking up with a wireless microphone. Um, the, 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 the sound, the, the feedback sound of the inside of containers and then processing it uh, via her computer. And so we devised this project where um, we, uh, it was all based on recycled plastic bottles. And, and so we, we presented this project in several places. It's called Land Fee because it's, it's like landfills, but fee like the girls in French. And um, it, it, the, the way it worked would be that we would uh, ask people to bring in their bottles to recycle and then we would take off the labels and then we, we would create like a workshop where everyone um, together assembled these sculptures made of um, these bottles and, and the only directive was that there had to be an air passage and then that became uh, a basis also so there was cameras and uh, video projected on itself um, and then Keiko would perform inside so again this was like a fermentation for something to take on more or less a life of its own so I can show you an excerpt of that as well So that too is a whole that fills usually a whole room and 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 it's 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 like a living organism um, with a life of itself. So the so the idea is really um, to set up a system or an apparatus that's like a starter culture um, in 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 the process of fermentation. And and maybe finally I could show an excerpt of, of another work um, of, of the work I'm going to be showing um, at uh, this year's SciFest in Yerevan that starts next week. And um, now we have uh, an excerpt that's coming from Lucas Computer. So I'll show you a minute of that. And this is called Three Island Wind Songs. <laughs> Yeah, that's enough. So, uh, 
So it's and and so this too, this was also something produced during a residency in Greece. And it was also um, well, in, in this case, there's three chapters to this work, and it's a screen work. So it, it's it's uh, really meant as a uh, looping installation. But um, during the residency itself, I had set up this system with like a clothesline and the cans and and um, lavalier microphones uh, and and the camera because. Um, I had really imagined to do a much more video based project there and 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 this island where the residency was, which is called Cyrus, which is in the Cyclades was um, it's a completely dry island with almost no vegetation and wind all the time so visually it's not very interesting. Uh, th there's nothing much that's interesting to shoot in video and and so uh then i thought okay well, let's capture the wind and and let's improvise with the wind so um i th i think i'm running out of time and just one last thing i wanted to say is that um i also curate all sorts of events and and curating is also like a process of uh fermentation because i'll often put uh you know different people together that create uh, something new out of uh, two, you know, two entities will come together and, and it'll, it'll form a, a process of uh, fermentation uh, that will create something else, a, a, a transformation of, of both uh, the approaches of two people. So, um, well, maybe it's time to switch to Phil. Thank you so much, Catherine. And our final speaker is Phil Niblock. He is a pioneer intermediate artist using music, film, photography, video, and computers. He was born in Indiana in 1933. And for the past 50 years, he has been making music and intermediate performance, which have been showcased around the world. Since 1985, he has been a director of Experimental Intermedia Foundation in New York City, where he've been also an artist member since 1968. He is a producer of music in the intermediate presentation and experimental intermediate since 1973. And also he creates uh, the music uh, under the label. He is also a retired professor of film video and photography at the College of Staten Island in the City University of New York. And in 2014, he was a recipient of prestigious John Cage Award uh, uh, from the Foundation of the Contemporary Arts. I feel, can you please tell us about yourself and also how the fermentation uh, relates to your sounds? Sure. <clears throat> I began uh sort of adding different media to my uh, repertoire. In uh, 1960, I began to make still photographs. And by 65, I moved into more time-based media with film, uh, working mostly with a 16 millimeter film. Uh, but I needed some music uh, or sound uh, for some projects that I was doing. Uh, with the films, so I began to make music in 1968. <clears throat> oh, a relatively short period of time. But I'm going to talk about the music more as uh, fermentation. I, I'm a very process-oriented person, so I uh, make music where I uh, work usually with uh, uh, individual uh, acoustic instruments like cello, uh, bassoon, saxophones, uh, et cetera. And I make pieces which are using the one instrument and but are, they're very uh, complex uh, sound because I mix many different uh, characters of those instruments. And I also work with uh, uh, 
microtones by uh, producing microtones so that they, the sound changes as the different notes sound together. So I'm making very long drones uh, primarily and using either uh, tape in the very beginning or <clears throat> now the computer and which track uh, DAO system. <clears throat> So I put together a lot of tones uh, by first recording in, in the studio, a musician uh, playing one tone. <clears throat> and then I go back to the studio and I mix those tones in a uh, multi-track system, maybe 30 or 40 tones at the same time. So they make a very uh, constant sound. <clears throat> and I, play those in uh, uh, concerts of, of music, uh, frequently with, with film uh, as well. And uh, it very much involves the entire uh, acoustic space of the uh, concert hall, so that it all begins to really throb with uh, what happens in the music itself. So uh, going then from a very single uh, tone uh, is the first part of the process to a very complex uh, array of tones uh, filling the space. Uh, and that's the process of fermentation, I think. Thank you so much. And also, uh, well, it's a question for uh, Phil and uh, Catherine. Um, you have been involved in experimental music for a long time, and now so you also uh, preserving the archive. And what are the main challenging for archiving of contemporary experimental music in terms of also fermentation? If you can elaborate on this, you want to answer first, or shall I answer? I don't know about challenges, but I I can say that. Uh, the fact of preserving uh, things, uh, preserving works, uh, it, it can, it, the preservation can create new starters for, for new works. So anything that ends up in an archive that's accessible to other people can, can serve as um, uh, inspiration because inspiration is also a form of transformation and it could be revisited reused remixed um and also it, it's a way of accessing the past um I, I somewhere i read as i was preparing for today I, I was reading about fermentation and uh somewhere i read that um in general like metaphorically the uh, process of fermentation is um, it's change uh, with, with the simultaneous, which has si simultaneously preservation and transformation as well as futurity and decay. So it's all that together. And so uh, archiving is in a way a battle against decay and the disappearance. Um, do you want to say anything? Yes. I think one of the most important things that's happened in the last 50 years is a complete change from uh, analog uh, art uh, to digital. That uh, the sound is converted into numbers and stored in a computer, for instance, and then played back by reconverting it to sound. Uh, the same thing with images, that uh, video is now completely digital, so that when we look at it uh, on the internet, for instance, we're looking at a, a digital source instead of a uh, acoustic source. And looking at a 60 millimeter film projected in a theater is definitely an analog acoustic uh, phenomenon. Whereas when we see this thing on our uh, computer screens, it's definitely digital being converted back to that uh, analog state. This made an incredible difference in, in the way things are archived. 
so that now almost all of my music and my film is simply a, in a file on, and on a computer in a hard drive somewhere and not uh, a roll of film or a roll of uh, tape uh, as it was 50 years ago. But yeah, but the challenge is to, um, in, in any case, uh, digitize um, images and sounds that, that were on physical mediums um, faithfully because, uh, and, and, and to do it before the decay starts. For example, we just had a, a meeting with people from the New York Public Library yesterday and, and uh, they were saying how uh, if experimental intermedia has anything on tape or on um, that, that uh, best not to copy it several times because it, especially the older medium, the quarter inch tape, et cetera, and especially certain brands, if every time you play it, you're removing the magnetic dust from it. So the there's actually whole new departments of um, media preservation now uh, in, in, that are either part of archiving departments or um, uh, media preservation departments. So with all new techniques of how to uh, how to combat the decay in the best possible way. Yes, thank you, Catherine, and uh, uh, thank you, Phil. And now we'll come come to our co-host, Luca Porcini. And at the beginning, when when we were discussing our joint laser, the idea was of combining efforts in exploration in exploration the potential uh, if. Uh, Collaborate, like collective collaboration. So can you start with telling us about your like first podcast and maybe your experience with Phil Nablock uh, videos? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think, well, first of all, the collaboration um, is something that we see pretty much at the moment uh, in uh, the collectives. I mean, Sciland is a collective for what I understand. And it's also create uh, a certain agency in the arts, in the creative part. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy that we can collaborate and, and joint efforts on, uh, on these lasers, laser Norman and laser silent for that particular reason of augmenting the potentials of the ideas and, and uh, the field of possibilities. Uh, yeah, Laser Nomads, in fact, is a, is a, is a laboratory, is a mobile laboratory, uh, that's his name, and then it creates art and science encounter. But uh, it started with podcasts, actually, and the first guest for uh, uh, this series of podcasts was uh, Phil Niblock, indeed. And uh, I remember it was in Berlin, 2018, and... Um, I had, I had uh, the occasion to attend many of his, not many, but uh, a good deal of concerts and I'm very sensitive to, to uh, his process as he just described. And uh, at that moment, I was, I was about to leave for South Africa and we were discussing, uh, I mean, a uh, normal interview. And he told me that he went to South Africa, actually, in, in the 70s and uh, and then uh, he gave me two movies, actually, one of uh, Lizutu and one from South Africa. And it was, well, first I was super honored because I couldn't even thought about such uh, opportunity. But on the other hand, what I thought interesting also, while I was playing the piece, because at some point I was with electroacoustic material because I could not travel with the musicians. And I was in front of this material from the 70s, playing music that they just recorded. And yeah, there's a very, and, and at some point, actually, uh, a curator in Zurich uh, at the uh, Valsche Tourme put the two movies, uh, one uh, next to each other. So I had 
les Zutu and South Africa at the same time, plus with these layers of sound that they just worked with people that were not where, there and that I was playing. So yeah, it was, it was um, I, would, I would say that there's a, while we're having this conversation uh, together, uh, there is an idea that came to me, I mean, a term, uh, if there was uh, agency in fermentation, you know, because with what I just described, there was a kind of something, uh, let's call it agency, that was putting the things together at the same time. So something was uh, appearing right in front of my ears and uh, uh, eyes, you know. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Yes, yes. thank you so much, uh, Luca. And now we're coming to Sergei. And um, we know that the festival is coming up just in a few days and you have a great programs planned and maybe just can elaborate a few words about the program coming up on this fermentation and the sound. Yeah, this work that I talked earlier will be presented, uh, the blobs per minute and the slow burning and uh, already all the parts that should be warm at on the installations is started warming and what is need to be uh, the beer is starting to prepare to put in the boxes so it's very interesting challenges to uh, on on the on this unusual say fest when we not just uh, using mediums and electronics and programming as we do but uh, we uh, join it with the uh, people who who works with uh, food with uh, with this uh, with this unusual for our things and uh, you know this is uh, very, very interesting we we see new horizons and uh, this is uh, uh, very interesting to to work with the new mediums which is very unusual for us And on, on this note, so uh, we invite everyone who is uh, in Armenia to come and uh, visit the festival, which starts on October 10th. And you'll see some of our today's participants present and performing and exhibiting. And on this note, I would like to thank our co-host for today, Lisa Norman and co-host Luca Forcini. And thank you so much, the speakers, Kesselin Liberovskaya, Phil Niblick, Sergei Komarov, for your sharing your thoughts and perspective and your passion for sound and sonic arts and experimental music. And thank you so much to the audience. And thank you, Nomad and Silent Media Art Lab and the Kaladze Art Foundation teams. And of course, the Leonardo Journal and the community for fostering and guiding the dialogue on sound art and the technology. So let's continue our conversation, both in person and online, and follow laser Leonardo Art Science Rendezvous at uh, uh, Talks Silent and Norman on the social media. So thank you so much, and let's meet up soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.